In this video, I am going to talk about probably the second biggest problem you're going to have if you put a granny flat in your backyard. And of course, the first biggest problem will probably be building permits, building planning department. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to our problem, and that is going to be plumbing, underground plumbing, the waste pipe plumbing system. And that will be the fact that the end of the waste line is usually going to be at the minimum height it could possibly be buried in the ground at the back of the house. However, if it's running from the front of the house to the back of the house, you can stop watching this video right now because you're going to be able to tie into it quite easily. But that isn't going to be the standard. Most of the time it's running from the back of the house to the street or towards the front of the house. And if you need to extend the plumbing drain line and you have a situation like this, then you could run out of room. You could actually create a problem to where the pipe would be either too close to the top of the soil to be approved by your local building department, or you could actually have it to where it would be sticking out of the soil and it definitely wouldn't be approved by your local building department. Now there is one more thing I'd like to point out when looking at this picture and that would be the fact that your property might be sloping from the back to the front and this usually allows the water to drain to the street and then down the street to the storm drain system and if this is the case then your pipe might be sloping the same distance as the top of the soil and you wouldn't have a problem so again another thing that you would need to consider and of course, if you cannot connect to the back of the house, you are going to install a new plumbing waste line. And that line is going to need to connect into the existing sewer somewhere. And this is where it could really start to become expensive, especially if the connection you need is somehow underneath the street. But hopefully you won't have to go that far and you will be able to connect it somewhere on the property. And of course, the next problem will be all the obstacles that you could run into. For example, you will be digging a trench around your property because it's not going to make a lot of sense for you to go underneath the house with your plumbing, tear up your building foundation. It's going to make a little more sense to go around the house. And of course, this could be either side of the house also. A view of it from the bottom there. Just trying to give you an idea of how the pipe is sloping in hopes of explaining something that makes sense. And of course, I have this drawn in here. Your pipes could be completely different. You could be coming off of here at a 45 degree angle. Or this could be a little closer or a little further away. Just trying to give you an idea. You're not going to be able to look at this and say, hey, I'm going to be able to do this exact same thing. And for those of you who don't really understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a trench, this trench could start at two feet here and then that could be the highest spot. Everything there would be sloping a quarter of an inch per foot or an eighth of an inch per foot depending upon what size pipe you're going to be using until you eventually get to the spot where you're going to have to dig a giant hole if you can't find that plumbing pipe and I've had to do that before. Now enough of the bad news. What would the trench look like if you could connect to the back of the house? It would look something like this. You would just simply dig a trench down to where your plumbing pipe was and maybe an existing clean out would give you a clue or you might have a bathroom in the back of the house and of course that would be a good place to start and then you would just simply dig a trench to the granny flat or tiny home, whatever you're building back there. And something else that could save you a lot of money would be that you could simply raise the height of the building and then bring some more soil into the back of the property if the pipe wasn't deep enough in the soil or if you simply needed a few more inches or in some cases even a foot. You could simply raise the house and then put a couple of steps or a small stairway that would be going up to the front door. And again, I'm just throwing out a couple of options here because if I had the choice I would definitely raise the house instead of digging that big trench and trying to find the main sewer pipe going around all of the other obstacles that would be required like sidewalks driveways and of course big trees to get a new plumbing pipe in another idea and this might not be feasible would be to move the building a little closer to the house Maybe everything would work out a little better, but of course you would have to make sure that your planning department would approve something like that. And even though something like this might not be feasible, you could always put it in the front of your house. 
But again, this is something that would need to be approved by your local planning department because most of the time we have easements that require a minimum distance to the front of a building, the front of your home, and possibly the center of the street. And of course, that would be something your local planning department could help you figure out. And the last couple of items I want to mention in the video would be to make sure that you are on a sewer drainage system and not a septic tank. If you have a septic tank and a leach field, then there's a good chance you're not going to be able to build your tiny home or granny flat over the leach field. So keep that in mind also. And the last thing I want to point out, even though I already pointed this out in the video already, would be if the sewer pipe was located in the back of the house. Maybe you have a back easement and maybe even an alley, something like that. If that's the case, then as I mentioned earlier, then you would be able to tie into this a little easier. If, of course, the building was going to be located in the back and not the front. And hopefully that's enough information to get you started on that part of the project. Next up, let's take a look at the foundation and the plumbing for a small house project to help you understand a little bit more about plumbing. So let's go ahead and get started with the forms, which will be two by 12, and the footings will be 12 inches wide and 12 inches deep. Another view of it there. And the stakes, even though you can't see any nails, I will be providing you with pictures along the way to provide you with a better idea of how the stakes will be fastened to the forms, how the rebar might be tied, and how some of the plumbing might need to be wrapped when it's going through the concrete. And in case you haven't figured it out by now, I'm not going to be providing you with step-by-step -step directions on how to build this. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what it might look like if you were going to attempt to do this on your own. And as always, for those of you who are familiar with my videos, feel free to leave any questions you might have in the comment area. Let's go ahead and take a look at the plumbing now. I did a video about another house that had plumbing in it, and I didn't want to do the same thing, so I kind of changed things up here. And I ran the pipe straight, but at a 22 degree angle. And of course, the fittings will tie in here with a 22 degree fitting over here. But I wanted to be able to put a clean out at one end to where you could just go through a straight pipe if you needed to. And of course, you can put a clean out at this end also. And of course, to provide you with a different method something you can think about even if you're going to be building a different type of house. So let's go ahead and go through the plumbing here. So here we have a 22 degree fitting, a Y with a 2 inch coming off of it, a 45 and then a 22, 22 and a half or a 1 16th bend. And of course this is 3 inch dropping down to a 2 inch. So we have a 2 inch I should say dropping into a 3 inch. And now let's go to the other section here. And of course this is going to be for the laundry or I should say the wash machine. It's going to be a two inch and these two pipes will be connected with a long 90 degree sweep And I like to use the long sweeps underneath the building foundation for everything that has a 90 degree angle And then we are going to reduce down to an inch and a half So for our kitchen sink, we're going to have an inch and a half pipe drop into a two inch pipe And this will be a combo fitting here Now let's go over to the kitchen sink area And we are going to 45 off of this to a 90 and up now let's pan out and in case you're wondering why I came into here instead of just coming over to here it's a personal preference you can do what you want but sometimes if I get too close to here this section right here just caves in so something to think about you might want to come in a little bit further to reduce the possibility of this thing right here just kind of caving into the footing and of course I did the same thing over here now let's go ahead and pan out again so that I can provide you with another option. This pipe right here could have just went straight into here also. And of course it would have just connected with something like this where we have a Y fitting with a 45 degree intersecting point. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our bathroom. First up on the list is our toilet. And then we have another combo that comes off to a 90 and then to a Santee and then over to our bathtub. So this pipe will pick up our bathtub. And then I left all of this a two inch right 
here because you're supposed to have a vent for every fixture. And if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me on that. And if you are going to correct me, please provide us with the building code reference number and even the page number if you have it. And of course, if you did need to add another vent, you could simply add it right here and then come into the wall. So it would be something that would look like this, just be a little bit shorter. But I don't think we're going to need a vent because I'm allowed to go quite a distance here with the three inch pipe. I believe it's about six feet before I pick up my vent. And this is actually going to be a wet vent for the sink in the bathroom. So I really don't see a problem with this setup. However, now would be a good time to point out that you would need to check with your local building department to verify whether or not you could actually use any of the stuff I've designed here. And of course, that would count for the rest of the house also. So again, I like my nice straight shot with the clean out in case anything ever got trapped in here, clogged or blocked. And that is it for the rough plumbing. Let's go ahead and backfill all of our trenches here and make sure that you use an approved fill material. And even though you probably won't be able to get them nice and square like this, you'll be able to round them off somehow. And of course, our block out form for the bathtub drain. Make sure that you do not forget that. Our rebar for the footings. And in our example, we're going to be using half inch or number four rebar. And all of the splices need to be at least 20 inches long. However, you can make them a little longer. I like to make mine at least 22 inches. And we are using 20 foot rebar to minimize the breaks. You can use 10 foot stuff if you want to. It's not going to be a big deal. And of course, it just goes all the way around the footings splice again or lap and it's usually about three or four inches from the top and three or four inches from the bottom and again I'm not trying to provide you with structural engineering information you might need to contact an engineer for more information on the design of the building foundation and we have number four rebar going in both directions spaced 24 inches on center so for example this would be spaced two foot four foot six foot this would be two foot four foot six foot and of course this can be spaced spaced closer together also. For example, 16 inches on center is a common spacing for something like this. Now let's take a look at the other side. You can see here it's 24 inches all the way across except for this area here. Another view of it there. Here we had to move some of the rebar because of the tub box. So I just went ahead and put one on this side and then one on this side to make up for the pieces here that aren't connected. Close up view of it there. Another view View of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our anchor bolts. And we're going to be using half inch anchor bolts that are going to be about 14 inches long. You might be able to use smaller ones. Feel free to check with your local building authorities. And the maximum spacing on that is going to be six feet. They cannot be spaced more than six feet apart. And if you notice these two are spaced closer together, that's because there's going to be a framing plate break right here. You need to have an anchor bolt within 12 inches of the break. That's why there are two right here. And of course, at the corners they will be a little closer together also. Another view of everything there. At this end you can see the anchor bolts are going all the way around. And after you have completed all of this you can call for your inspection and pour your concrete. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.